For all of the different optimization actions that you can complete inside of Google Ads, for me, this is the one which carries the most risk. And that's either by starting smart bidding, so enabling maximized conversions or maximized conversion value, or adding in a target ROAS or a target CPA. In all of those moves that you're making, it can be the best thing for your Google Ads account and by default for your business, but it can also be the worst and it can really, really cause havoc inside of your Google Ads campaigns. So in this video, I wanna break down some of the misconceptions that are around with smart bidding, really go through a guidelines of how you should use smart bidding, and then we'll jump into a real life example to really, really break down for you when you should be using smart bidding and how to think about it in your Google Ads campaigns. Now to help you with this, because as I said, it is a quite a complicated thing to get right. If you do need some more help with your smart bidding and getting this set correctly, if you follow that link in the description below, you can get access to my smart bidding checklist. And this is a process that we use in Define Digital Academy to make sure we get this decision right every time. All right, but let's get into the teaching for today. And firstly, I wanna start with this first point, and that's what I call the target CPA or the target ROAS myth. And what you really, really need to understand is that the conversion metrics that are inside of your Google Ads dashboard, yes, they are important, but the ones that really matter are the metrics which are inside of your profit and loss statement for the business. So if this is your business, yes, you do wanna really be looking at what's happening inside of your cost per conversion value or your cost per conversion inside of Google Ads. But what's more important is the, you know, the quality of the leads coming to your business or the amount of revenue that is coming into your business. And if you're managing the Google Ads account for another business, that's where you really, really wanna be asking the business owner or the whatever team you're talking to to get as much information about the health of that business. And the reason for that is because the conversion data, while it's important inside of the Google Ads account, it's not a true reflection of what's happening inside of the business. And that's what you really wanna get down to because these meters like target CPA and target ROAS, we purely use them as an optimization tool. It's not about the actual health of the business. And this is where a lot of Google Ads managers get this wrong. They are purely guided by the target ROAS that is inside the account. And then they report this to the business of, hey, look, we're doing a great job. We got your ROAS of 650,000 or whatever they are reporting. And this become really, really clear. We've got a short video that's available on my YouTube channel. It's our highest viewed short. And a lot of it comes down to because people keep commenting on it because there's a little screen grab where they're, it's showing a ROAS of 200%. And there's all these people going off like, oh, why are you running Google Ads? Because you know a, a ROAS of 200 is pathetic. All of those things without knowing that for that business, that was the single best decision we ever made. And the reason for that was because the profit for that business is not in the upfront sale. The profit for that business is in the 24 month maintenance plan that comes once they get that initial sale. So for us, when we knew that about the business, we said to them, look, we need to drop down your ROAS targets because what you need is more volume because when you get the volume of sales, that drives up the revenue in your business. And that's a perfect example to really break down that the biggest thing I see about smart bidding, and especially when you get into target ROAS or target CPA, it kind of comes with like the most important metric. And I've seen this different business owners talking about this before where they go, well, I'm getting a, I'm getting a ROAS of 500%, so it means that I must be doing a good job. In some cases, you are far better to be targeting a ROAS of 200% rather than a ROAS of 600%. So what I want you to think about is that, yes, your target ROAS or your target CPA are important metrics, but you use them as an optimization tool. Don't think that because you are getting a target ROAS of whatever percent 800% that you're doing a great job. Really, really take a step back, ask the business, you know, what's the actual revenue coming into the business? What are the lead quality coming into the business? So what I want you to really think about is that your target ROAS and your target CPA optimization tools. And let's jump into a screen share so I can show you what I mean. All right, so what I want you to think about is that when you're setting your target ROAS, is you really need to be getting this bell curve right. And what you wanna be looking at here is that this green line is really what we're looking for, what we call the optimal ROAS or CPA target. And that's where we're seeing the revenue or the number of conversions actually increasing. And if you set your target ROAS too high or your target CPA too low, it can actually become restricted because it lowers the total revenue because it limits your clicks and impression. So if you set that target ROAS too high, and the way I want you to think about it is this, is that there's going to be more people that will convert at a 300 ROAS than will convert at an 800 ROAS. So what the role is here, what you really want to find out is where's that sweet spot where you are still getting growing revenue at a profitable level, which is not hurting your performance. Because the other so flip side of that is, 
is if you set it too low, let's just say you set a target ROAS at 100 or a target CPA at $150, and it just brings in poor quality traffic, once again, you're gonna be seeing bad results. So what you really wanna make sure is that you're setting that target ROAS or target CPA at the optimal level that's still allowing you to grow the total revenue and total conversions at a profitable level. So the first thing is to remember is that don't fall into that CPA or target ROAS myth in that the target CPA or the target ROAS that you are achieving inside of your account really dictates the success in your business. That is actually not true. Those two things are separate. And that leads us to the next point is that the way that you need to be really thinking about your target ROAS or your target CPA goals is that they are not an accelerator, that they are actually a break. So when you go through and set your maximized conversion value or your maximized conversions, as long as you've got enough data, you can see that that can grow your business. And then when you want to start adding in that level of profitability, that's where you set a target CPA or target ROAS, but you kind of want to set it at the bottom benchmark. Too many people set their target ROAS too high or their target CPA too low, and it actually acts as a break and limits that performance because you're limiting the total volume inside of your account. So what you want to be thinking about here is that when you set a target ROAS, is that you need to set it on the current data inside of the account, not what you want to achieve. So if you want to achieve a ROAS of 600%, but your account is currently at 300%, setting a target ROAS to 600% and hoping that Google will find the, you know, the revenue at 600%, it just won't happen. What will happen is that you'll end up seeing pretty much no spend inside of your account. But if you do need to get up to that 600, the way that you do that is through optimization. So you go through an optimization cycle and when you start to see some data inside of your account where you can go, okay, we can step up our roles to 350. Now we can step it up to 400. So I want you to think about, you need to be either climbing that staircase up or down. So if you need to increase your ROAS, you're doing your optimization so you can slowly lift up that ROAS. Or if you are wanting to get cheaper conversions, you're stepping to that cost per conversion goal. But it's based off the data that is inside of your account, not what you're wanting to achieve. And that's the process we go through that smart bidding checklist. And remember, you can follow that link in the description below if you want to get access to that smart bidding checklist. But as promised, Let's jump into some real life accounts so I can walk you through how we use Target ROAS in this example to increase the performance of a real life business account. All right, this example is for an e-commerce brand. So we're gonna be dealing with Target ROAS, but Target CPA is essentially the same process that we're gonna be going through. And what I wanna show you in through here is that we're looking at data for a new campaign that we started in mid June, and now we're running to the end of September. I've got this data, we're looking at weekly data. And what I wanna show you in through here is that you can see with this one, we're getting a conversion value cost or ROAS of seven points. Seven. What I also want to show you in through here is that this is when we obviously started the spend, but I want to show you with this average target ROAS is that we didn't start it until after eight weeks of actual spend. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight weeks after we started the campaign, that's when we added in the target ROAS. And the reason for that is because we wanted to see what the exact level was to add in that target ROAS because we didn't know. So you can see through here is that when we started this target ROAS, we set it at 600. And what what we did is we let this start to grow up through here. So we had a week of 500, had a week at eight, then it went to eight again, then at seven, then at seven, and then at seven and a half. For this business, they want that row somewhere around 650 works right for the business. So what we were doing in through here is that we wanted to start to see where this came through because remember at the same time, we're looking at increasing our spend. So we wanted to get that sweet spot of where I was talking about before where we're not limiting spend, but we're also doing it in a profitable level. So if we wanted to, when we introduced this target ROAS, we could have actually potentially introduced it somewhere around that 700. But the reason why we went down is because we knew that this business wanted to jump up their spend again. And you can actually see that we dropped it down even further to where it's at 500. Because what we were wanting to do here as well is that once again, you can see how this ROAS has kicked up even higher when the conversion values kicked up higher. We want to keep that volume running through. So when it comes to your ROAS goal and your target ROAS is it's always safer to have it lower than what you're actually performing forming, especially if you're wanting to scale your account and see more spend and revenue coming into the business. And if you can see from here, this is just obviously one campaign. We've been able to successfully scale this up and also get the total value growing at that same level. So it's really, really important. And the worst thing that we would, could have done for this account is to set a target ROAS back here where Google was giving the recommendations to set that target ROAS. So the first thing is only start that target ROAS when you start to see this start to dip. So we had good average or we call stabilization of results. Also be thinking about what you want to achieve in the future. We knew that this business owner wanted to kick up the total revenue and the total cost. So that's why we set that target ROAS lower, which has allowed us to continue to grow and perform at a high level for this account. Thank you for joining me. And remember, if you want to get my smart betting checklist to 
to help you through making these decisions. Make sure you follow that link in the description below. And if you'd like to see more training about how to correctly use Smart Being in your account, go through and watch this video right here. Thank you for joining me. My name is Aaron Young for Define Digital Academy. I look forward to seeing you in the next video right now. See ya.